Thursday evening. It's our NBT informational webinar for those of you who are joining, um, where we aim on helping you to navigate the national benchmark test. And I'm seeing a bunch of people jumping on, which is great. Sebastian, welcome. Monique, Jasmitha, Chaya, Shrimps. I hope I said that okay. Plenty of people jumping on now. I'm not going to be able to keep up with a personal welcome for each of you, but thank you for joining us this evening. And I hope we can answer some of your questions um, and help you start uh, the journey towards tackling the national benchmark test in 2021. It is still one minute to half past five. So we're just going to hold on a little bit longer before we get started. Um, to ensure that we've given every, everyone who wants to join an opportunity to jump onto the stream. Yeah, and this evening I'm joined by um, Sipo Sayo, who's on the line with us from our Advantage Learn team. She, she's here to support and to, to field your questions, the questions that come via Facebook, and also to interject if I forget anything. So um, SK, as we call her for short, thanks for, for joining us this evening. So happy to be here. Hello, everybody. So, the clock has chimed half past five, which is our appointed time for the informational webinar this evening. And so I think it's high time that I started. There are still a couple of people jumping on, which is great. Um, but yes, I'm going to get going. So welcome again, everyone. Um, my name is Crispian Lees. I'm the head of education at Advantage Learn. And this evening, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, we're going to be talking to you about the national benchmark test and helping you to understand what this assessment is, what it impacts, um, and how you can go about preparing for it. And as I mentioned, joining me this evening is, is SK, who's also going to be helping um, to field questions. So she's on the line and, and you'll see her helping you via the chat or via the Q&A and also directing questions to me via Facebook, because we are also live on Facebook and we'll have some joiners joining us live on Facebook. So thanks again to SK. All right, um, just as I get going, what I do like to do is I just like to make sure that you can hear me and you can see me okay. And the, the way I like to check in on that is if you can just give me a show of hands that you can hear me and you can see me well and the stream is functioning as it should. I'm seeing hands jump up. Thank you, Monique and Sarah Ann. Great. Okay, a lot of people have put their hands up. So that's um, enough indication that the stream is functioning correctly. So let's get straight into it. Um, as, you, as you can see, you found the raise your hand functionality on the stream. So you, you are welcome to your raise your hand at, at any time and, and ask a question. Um, for now, if you can just put your hands down, so I don't think that you are trying to ask a question. Once you've raised them, um, it's been resolved, just remember to put them down. Um, and then just with regards to asking questions, because we encourage questions um, completely, you can either put your hand up and, and ask me in a live capacity, or you can post your question in the Q&A or in the chat, and I'll pick them up there um, as I go, and oftentimes I will answer them as we go. Sometimes I will pull them to the end of the session where we, where we do have a Q&A planned at the end of the session. Okay, so please feel free to ask questions. Um, that's what you're here for this evening to, to find out information that you need to know about the national benchmark tests and hopefully we can help you with all of that. All right, so to, just to, to start with, I'd like to just give you a little bit of context in terms of who we are, advantagelearn.com. Um, so we're an educational organization um, largely um, in online education, but also significantly running in-person programs as well. Um, we were founded in the advanced programs. If you see on my, my slide deck here, the green circle speaks to the advanced programs. Advantage Learn started by helping learners to prepare, prepare for advanced program mathematics, which is a certificate administered by the IEB, um, which is a reformulation of what used to be called additional mathematics for those of you um, like myself 
who um, would have experienced it in that form when we were in high school. Um, so yeah, we, we run advanced programs in advanced program mathematics and advanced program physics. Um, and we do that live online, guided online, and also in person when possible. It's usually been possible, but the in-person in classes to some extent have had to be streamed into online streams in the recent past due to the pandemic, as I'm sure all of you are grappling with, with different ways to manage um, manage what you do in, in, this, in, this, um, in this time. Over and above that, we, um, we help learners with exam preparation in maths, science, accounting, Afrikaans, life sciences with impact courses um, leading up to exams. Um, so, so we also help learners significantly in exam preparation. We have an annual program called our Academy where, um, and that is in maths and science in the normal Academy. And in our Academy Plus um, program, we offer a, an online Academy for robotics and um, a degree of, of, of computer science. Um, so those are annual programs where we essentially help learners to take their maths and science to the next level if they're looking to achieve better results and um, close their gaps, revise and extend themselves in those, in those subjects, then, then those academies are incredibly helpful. And on, on the Academy Plus side, that's all about um, future, future skills um, and equipping learners with future skills um, that are not necessarily currently embedded in the formal education structures. And, and our robotics program is, is one of those things. We also have a lot of self-study resources available to high school learners. Some of you might have actually got wind of Advantage Learn last year when we opened up our Maths Online um, resource to South Africa to help with learning online when, when the, the country was, was thrust into lockdown and learners couldn't go to school. Um, and we had over 20,000 learners um, enroll into Maths Online and use that Maths resource to help help continue their studying. That also, we also have Science Online, which is a, is a similar resource, but for science. Um, and then the other thing that we do at Advantage Learn significantly is we help learners prepare for the national benchmark test. Um, and that is what we are here to talk about this evening. Not, not too much on preparation, mostly on what the national benchmark test is. We were the first to ever help learners with national benchmark test preparation. We have many years of experience in the national benchmark test. And so we're going to share that with you this evening and help you to understand what it's all about. All right. So moving forward, um, just a brief synopsis on what we'll be covering this evening. First of all, what are the national benchmark tests? I'll explain to you what they are. Secondly, who needs to write the national benchmark tests and why are they important? And then lastly, we'll touch briefly on how can I prepare for the national benchmark tests. So let's start with what are the MBTs? So the MBTs were started by a group called the National Benchmark Test Project, which is a research group at the University of Cape Town, UCT. Um, that, that group is now CTAP, the Center for Edu Educational Testing and Placement. And essentially, that group was tasked by Higher Education South Africa, who um, uh, perform a, a governance role around the universities in South Africa. They were tasked with formulating an assessment that could be used to assess academic readiness of um, matriculants or, or learners entering the university system. So um, essentially, the, la the educational landscape is constantly shifting, learner profiles are constantly shifting, standards are shifting, and the university universities need to know what, um, what profile of learner is entering the university system so that they can ad adapt and adjust their programs to um, support those learners to succeed and graduate and go into and and actually feed the economy in the the, the skills areas and um, that universities are are 
there to to um, to serve. So um, that's how the national benchmark test started in 2008. And as I mentioned, they're a set that they started as a set of tests used to assess academic readiness for tertiary study and inform universities on um, how they can adjust their programs to support learners and ensure that they succeed. They were very successful in terms of um, benchmarking learners' readiness for tertiary studies to the extent that ha they have now become very widely used as a placement assessment into very competitive universities and very competitive degree programs. Because there's a only, there, there's only so much space in universities in South Africa for learners to pursue a degree. Um, and the National Senior Certificate, the matric certificate, was not providing universities with a high enough degree of differentiation of, the, of, of candidates to make um, reliable and informed admissions decisions. And the MBT was giving universities an additional layer of resolution on the readiness of these, these candidates entering university so that they could make the best admissions decisions. At the end of the day, there are limited spaces in the degree programs across all universities in South Africa, and universities need to make the best choices in terms of admitting learners so that they can produce um, the, the, the amount of skills needed in those areas and actually um, have a high, high percentage of success or throughput through those programs. So, so the national benchmark test has become very much used as a requirement for admission into certain degrees at certain universities. Um, and that's really what the national benchmark test is. Apart from to say that it is made up of two assessments, um, the AQL test and the MAT test. And I'm going to talk about those now. Okay, so to start with the AQL test, the AQL test, AQL stands for academic and quantitative literacy. If learners need to write the national benchmark tests, the AQL test is the compulsory test. Okay, so that every learner that does the national benchmark tests will have to write the AQL test. So what is academic and quantitative literacy? So this test is twofold. It's, it's assessing two domains, academic literacy and quantitative literacy. Academic literacy is somewhat similar to um, your home language subject at school. So English, home language, um, Afrikaans home language, or whatever home language you, you are studying at your school. Um, and, but it's not exactly the same. It focuses on learners' ability to read, understand, and communicate meaning from a body of text. So it's all about um, meaningfully being able to meaningfully engage with text, understand text, analyze text in all its different forms. And, and that is what is accept, assessed by the academic literacy component of the AQL test. The quantitative literacy components of the, of the AQL test is somewhat similar to mathematical literacy at school. Its focus is um, numerical literacy and quantitative literacy, as, it's, as it states, which is all about being able to work with numbers, work with data, work with graphs, understand um, real world pro problems like finances, budgets, percentages, um, perimeters, things like that. So learners who, who do mathematical literacy at, at school um, are, are somewhat familiar with the types of questions that, that, that might come out in, a, um, in the quantitative lit literacy component of the, of the AQL test. Whereas core maths learners who study essentially pure maths at school will actually be quite um, unfamiliar with the style of question. 
it's very much you know story some based and reading data and then inferring um information from data from graphs um and it's it's not easy and what makes it even more difficult is the fact that it is a numerical part of the assessment and no calculators are allowed and this is a significant challenge for learners and um, too many learners at high school are far too dependent on their calculators and if the calculator is taken away um they lose a, something a significant crutch that they've depended on for many years and it it proves to be a, a major stumbling block which influences their their performance on the test significantly so basic arithmetic and estimation skills are incredibly important in this in this assessment the aql test is a standardized assessment um, and it's a, a multiple choice assessment so in terms of academic literacy questions can include grammar punctuation vocabulary and then on the quantitative literacy side you'll get numerical application type questions um, yeah and that's what the academic literacy test is in a nutshell all right i see my um my cousin has jumped on which is quite exciting for me karu nice to see you online um and i hope this is helpful to you all right so let's move forward on to the mat test um the mat test as i mentioned if you do the mbts um you the aql test is compulsory the mat test is only required for certain degree programs at certain universities so it is mainly degree programs that have a a high degree of 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 quantitative subjects in their program a, a lot of maths essentially in the degree program it's also required by degree programs that are um, intensely competitive in terms of admission because this this gives universities a further test with which to differentiate candidates and make the best admissions decisions they can around um, the um, the scarce places available to into those programs all right so your medical medicine a lot of the medicine programs require this test because it is a, fiercely competitive to get into medicine and um, your, your your bachelor of sciences um, most of those degrees require the mat test engineering um, commerce degrees like bcom actuarial science those will those will mostly require the mat test to be written um, and the mat test mat essentially an abbreviation for mathematics it's a mathematics test it's related to core maths, which learners study at, at high school. Um, but it's, it's quite a challenging assessment in that it really focuses on application of their core maths knowledge. And um, a lot of the questions require a large degree of insight and they aren't scaffolded. The questions aren't scaffolded as they are in, in, in high school. And what I mean by that is um, oftentimes in mathematics, you'll get a question which will be made up of, of five parts, A, B, C, D, and E. And qu question A will be a, a simpler mathematical question, but the answer to that will help you towards the answer to B, which will help you towards the answer to C, to D, and so forth. And E will be the really difficult question, but you would have been helped along the solution journey because they've scaffolded the problem for you and they've led your mind because of the way they've asked the question. Whereas in the national benchmark test they pretty much go not with all questions but there's a fair percentage of difficult questions that go straight to that e level of of, of insight required and they don't lead you along and um, which makes it quite challenging the other thing that is challenging again is no calculators are allowed so learners that are far too dependent on their calculators and um, find that to be a significant stumbling block like the aql test it's a multiple choice test um, and essentially learners will need to demonstrate understanding and application of mathematical mathematical concepts. Um, the one thing I do like to highlight at this point with it with the NBTs being a 
multiple choice based assessments is that these are these multiple choice is not a form of assessment that high school learners are very well um, versed in most high school subjects are assessed by written assessments where part marks make up and working makes up a big part of the marks that learners can earn in that assessment towards their mark on that assessment so um, teachers are interested in um, the working that they use to get to the solution and which is, is and rightly so to to assess their thinking and and actually see if they're on the right track the final solution is important but the working is just as important and and so learners can earn part marks in a normal school written school assessment when it comes to the MBTs, it's not like that. And um, because it's multiple choice, it's right or wrong. Accuracy is um, paramount. Um, and a good exercise for learners to do to kind of hit, make this fact hit home and, and in terms of the national benchmark tests is go to your last maths test. Look at the mark that you received. Go through each question. Of the questions that you did in that maths test, how many of the questions did you actually get 100% on? How many of the questions did you get not get 100% on? Did you get four out of five or six out of 10 or two out of three? Because those questions that you only got part marks for, essentially in a national benchmark test type assessment, you would get zero, zero for those questions because accuracy is important. And then do yourselves a favor and zero your scores on those questions, only count the marks for questions that you got 100% correct and then recalculate the mark that you would have achieved on that test and you'll often find that your mark will go down significantly and that is what learners see in the national benchmark tests and um, we see learners that are achieving 90s and core maths at school only getting 60s to 70s in the national benchmark tests and their marks drop quite significantly and so that that gives impetus to the need to prepare for the national benchmark tests. Um, but before we get to that, who needs to write the NBTs? That will be a significant question that many of you will be wanting answered. So in a normal year, in a normal world, most grade 12s applying for tertiary study in South Africa, as well as learners looking to enter competitive de degree programs and or scholarship programs will need to write the national benchmark tests. Having said that, the requirement for the national benchmark tests is university and degree program specific. There is no standard requirement across all universities and across all degree programs. It is dependent on the university and the degree program to which you are applying as to whether or not you need to write the national benchmark tests. And so the important thing that you take away from this is that you need to do your research on whether or not you need to do the national benchmark tests. So that starts with answering the difficult question of what is it that you're wanting to study in 2022? And that's not an easy question for anybody. Um, and that's a difficult, um, difficult th thing to answer for all metrics. Um, so once you've got a degree of clarity on that and you, and you, you, you know what you are going to apply towards and which universities you're going to apply towards. You then need to research the requirements for those applications and you need to research the requirements for your first choice application, your second choice application and your third choice application because you'll probably have to apply for a number of things in case you don't get into your first choice and then you might be, then you hopefully accept it into your second choice. And if any of those applications require the national benchmark test, then you need to write the national benchmark test. Okay. If you are uncertain of whether you need to write the national benchmark test, if for instance, you don't think you're going to study next year, you're going to take a gap year and you still are trying to figure out what it is that you want to do and you need that time and space to, to figure it out. Our advice to you is write the national benchmark test in your matric year. That is when your maths is fresh in your mind. That is when your um, your English, your, your, your language as a, as a subject is fresh. Your language will improve um, as you mature and, and as you continue learning um, for the most part. Um, but 
you are generally learners are best equipped to write the national benchmark test in the metric year. and so if they're unsure of whether they're going to need it, it's best to write it because those results are then valid for three years. so in the next three years, if you do get clarity on what you want to do and then decide, oh, i want to i want to apply at this university for this degree program and you find out that it needs the national benchmark test then you've already written it and you've got a score that is likely the best score that you would achieve um if you uh, as opposed to waiting and writing later when you've possibly forgotten some of the content knowledge so um that's some advice around who needs to write the nbts as i mentioned previously if you do write the national benchmark test then you will have to write the aql test the max test is only required for specific degree programs like sciences engineering medicine and your commerce degrees okay all right so that brings us to why do you need to prepare for the nbts now there's there's different um there's different camps of of thought around preparing for the national benchmark tests um, as I mentioned previously, Advantage Learn were the four, first educational organization in South Africa to help learners prepare for the national benchmark test. Um, we are of the strong opinion that is, it is incredibly important that you prepare for the national benchmark test. There are different assessments. You can't use your calculator. They're multiple choice. The way questions are asked are different. Um, and significantly, they are used in placement for placement into degree programs at universities and if that is in a field and a university that you are aspiring towards well it can influence your admission and your progression towards the the, the career or um the career that you're dreaming towards and so if, if if that's the case then in our in our estimation you absolutely should give your best shot give yourself the best chance at um, continuing on that path towards what you dream of do doing in the future and and preparing for the test is something that can help you towards that um, so i've mentioned that they're unique assessments they're different um, they ask very insightful questions you can't they're multiple choice you can't use a calculator so preparing for that style of assessment is incredibly important so that you don't get tripped up um, when you just try try and tackle it for the first time when you're sitting there with the script in front of you um, and then as i've mentioned um, the results can affect your future and your future prospects in terms of admission into university and so for us we feel it's incredibly important that you prepare for the national benchmark test and give yourself the best shot towards your next step okay why are the MBTs important? I have spoken to this to a fair to a fair degree already. They are used as an additional um, placement metric into universities, where the university landscape, the tertiary institution landscape in South Africa, is highly competitive. There are many learners wanting to enter into university or tertiary institutions that not necessarily are universities that also use the MBTs. Um, to to admit learners and and to try and make the best admission decisions more and more institutions are requiring that the mbts be written before the application date for that course closes so that's a good thing to just be aware of and it rolls back to what i said previously do your research around your requirements for um uh, for application to the to to the degree your your degree um one one to emphasize is medicine for instance medicine largely candidates or applicants are required to have written the nbts before june um in to, to be able to to uh, complete an application towards medicine and uh, the subtlety there is they just need to have written before june they don't necessarily need to have got their test results uh, before the end of june um as I've mentioned, it has varying degrees of importance per university, per, per department. You need to do your research. Also, the timelines and the requirements will have shifted, um, will possibly have shifted um, significantly since 2020, 
when um, we were all impact, impacted by the pandemic. The National Benchmark Test Administrating Body um, at CTAP, the Center for Education for Educational Testing and Placement, they they, as with everyone, experienced significant hurdles in terms of administrating the National Benchmark Test last year. And so the requirements for the National Benchmark Test um, last year for matriculants entering university in 2021 were vastly different um, from previous years, which were no more normal years. Um, essentially, universities had to relax the NBT requirement because the National Benchmark Test administrators were unable to, to, to facilitate in-person testing, which had been the normal mode of testing prior to that. Having said that, the NBT administrator, so just to clarify that, Advantage Learn, we do NBT preparation. We help learners prepare for the NBTs, but we do know a lot about the NBTs. CTAP administrates the national benchmark tests. And in order to go to the administrating organization, you would go to nbt.ac.za. They did some foundational work last year where they actually rolled out online testing very successfully in the national benchmark tests. And so um, they're very well equipped in 2021 to be in a position to, to run the national benchmark tests in a, in, a, in, a, in a similar way to previous years, although a different mode of testing. Um, they, they, they formed a strategic partnership with an, an online testing and proctoring organization is very sophisticated um, technology now that can administer tests online in a in a very reliable and um, um, I'm I'm not getting the word re reliable and trustworthy um, way. They can track eye patterns to check that learners aren't checking notes up on a wall behind them. They monitor audio so that they can hear that learners aren't engaging with other, other things. And essentially, they can flag if a learner is cheating very easily. And then that result is, is, is obviously um, negated. And um, you possibly won't be able to, to, to write again. Um, so yeah, they, they, they did really well last year to implement online testing, which was, um, which was, a, which was a commendable commendable effort from the from CTAP in 2020. Okay, so moving forward, how to prepare for the national benchmark tests. So if you need to write the national benchmark tests and you do want to pre prepare, um, first thing, re-emphasize your research. Requirements are different for everyone. Understand what your requirements are. Then get to know more about the NBT. On advantagelearn.com, we do have a free quiz where you can try a short AQL style test and a short MAT style test um, with MBT level questions. And you can get a feel for the level of the assessment. And you know, it'll give you an indication in terms of how well, well prepared you actually are. Um, some basic things that you can do to prepare is work hard and apply yourself at school to mathematics and your home language. Um, because Obviously, your home English, for instance, as a home language or Afrikaans as a home language um, is going to be helpful in terms of your academic literacy component, which is a language component and your maths, applying yourself in your maths is going to be very helpful. And a significant piece of advice there is put your calculator away. All right. Only use your calculator when you absolutely have to. For instance, in trigonometry, you can't do certain trigonometric ratios without a calculator. Um, but basic arithmetic, you need to redevelop that skill if you've lost it, because you can't use a calculator in, in the MBTs. Now, you'll notice that I've largely been referring to English and Afrikaans in the presentation. The reason for that is those are the two languages of testing for the MBT. So the MBT, um, mbt.ac.za, they administrate the tests in English and Afrikaans. Okay, those are the two languages that you can take the tests in. All right, and that's why I'm mentioning those. Um, and then over and above that, um, we run preparation courses where we can help you to prepare for the national benchmark tests. We do them in person, live online, and we also have self-study online courses 
in both domains, maths and AQL, across both of the testing languages, which is English and Afrikaans. Okay, and this is essentially saying um, pretty much the same thing. So you can attend an in-person workshop with us, um, lockdown level permitting. You can attend a live online workshop with us, which get, both of those give you face time with an expert educator, or you can do a, a self-paced or guided online course with us where we pre-produce video lessons and um, um, application exercises that you can work through. Significantly, we also have a great base of Advantage Learn mock tests or mock exams. So we have mock AQL tests and mock MAT tests that are at a very appropriate level to prepare you for the NBTs. And those are incredibly helpful um, to learners preparing. Um, together with that, we do have a live support feature on our website where we have a team of, of, of maths teachers behind the desk and, and, and language experts who can help you with language type questions um, similar to the MBT language type questions and mathematics questions similar to the MBT type maths questions. All right, so it's really, if you want to do MBT preparation, what's important is that you choose choose the learning style that is that is helpful to you. Our workshops are, will, will be in all major metros, in person and live online. Um, and as you can see there, as mentioned, it includes mock MBTs, a workbook, FaceTime with an expert educator, and those are held at a set date and time um, where we help you prepare. The online courses, um, as I've mentioned, those are, are, are studio produced video lessons. And um, we cover similar, we, we cover the same concepts as the workshops, but it's not exactly the same content. So many learners actually go to a workshop and um, also do the online course so that they can really prepare comprehensively because we have different questions between the, the various offerings and um, the, the, the various streams. And so doing both is beneficial. And that gives you 12 month access to that course um, Equally, you get access to the mock MBTs and you can significantly not, it's not at a set date and time. You can learn anytime, anywhere via our, uh, our, learning, our learning platform. All right, here's the pricing for, for, for those preparation um, offerings. Um, as you can see the pricing, we have our, our workshop offerings. If you, if you prepare in both Matt and AQL, there's, 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 there's um, combination efficiencies and, you, and you, you get some discounts in that regard. Um, and then as I've mentioned, some learners actually attend workshops and do the online course um, in each domain. And there's also some, some discounts available in that regard. Um, our in-person workshops and our live online workshops are the same workshop, um, but there is a discount for learners that attend the live online session. Um, and that's mentioned below. It's 300 Rand discount for your Mac Live Online workshop and 200 Rand discount for your AQL Live Online workshop. So that's a, that's a view into pricing. If, um, if you want to book National Benchmark Test Preparation, you can simply go to advantagelearn.com, navigate to, sorry, um, navigate to the MBT page, filter and select your preparation of choice, you add your learner details and you can and essentially proceed through through checkouts to to co confirm your booking um, if all of this is too much for you and um, for whatever reason um, you you don't have capacity you're a very busy person um, and uh, you you worried about all the decisions that you need to make around the national benchmark test do i need to do it do i need to do aql and matt when should I write the test? Um, you can also go for the premium pass with Advantage Learn, where basically we will engage with you and advise you on when you should write the test. And you also get a, a degree of, of, of open access to, to our preparation um, offerings, where you can attend as many Matt and AQL live stream courses as you want um, to make sure that you're prepared. And, and, and we will 
guide you through the process. Um, we will understand your context in terms of um, what your extracurricular um, commitments are, what you're applying towards, and then advise a good time of year to write your test because the test is not written in one sitting, it's multiple sittings through the year. And when you write the test is um, context specific. You should write the test at the time that is best for you. And, and that translates to the time where you have the headspace and the time to prepare well for the test. That would be the best time for you to write the test. Um, obviously taking into account um, application timelines that you need to adhere to with universities. So this is also something that you can leverage. Um, and then, like I mentioned, um, go ahead and try this free um, trial free quiz at uh, www.advantagelearn.com forward slash product forward slash forward slash MBT preparation test yourself. And um, SK, if I can ask you to drop that link in the chat, although I think I already copied it to my clipboard. So I bet, yeah, I did. I just dropped it in the chat. And, okay. Okay. and so you'll all be able to copy it from the chat and, um, and navigate to it straight away, if it helps. Cool. All right. And that is everything I wanted to cover. So I haven't a quiet forum this evening, not so many questions as the last informational webinar. I hope that means I've explained things very well. Um, but please, now is the time for you to ask any questions that you might have. Um, <laughs> thanks, Monique. Um, yeah, and, and SK and I are, are here to, to, to field those questions. So um, type it in the chat, raise your hand, whatever you would like to ask, feel free to, to ask us. Okay, while we while you um, possibly type your questions there, or, or think of something that you might want clarity on. We do have a number of, of frequently asked questions that we do like to go through just to get things moving into well, to answer some remaining questions and to just get things uh, get the questions flowing. And um, one is do I have to send my results to the universities I'm applying to? No, the universities um, acquire your results directly from um, NB, the National Benchmark Test Project. Um, the, the, the universities get your results directly from them. So you, you simply need to apply at the university that you're applying towards, write the test, which you book via nbt.ac.za to write the test, um, and then once your results are available, the, the university will acquire those results from the National Benchmark Test Project um, as part of your, 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 um, your placement, as part of your, your assessment. Jordan Moses, good question. How long is the test, time-wise? They, um, they are both three hour assessments, the, the AQL, and the MAT are two three-hour assessments. For some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm second-guessing myself there. <laughs> but uh, I'm, yeah, they, they, they're two three-hour assessments. I don't, I don't know why I've got to hit a little bit of a blank there. I, I know this all too well, but you know, it's still, um, still early in the year, dusting off the cobwebs from, from December. Okay, if you apply for a course that does not require an MBT result, yet have written it, is your application possibly stronger? Obviously, as long as your NEC results are, are as required. Okay, good question, Monique. Um, I think Sorry, I'm just um, cycling back it's definitely three hours per test 
I've just managed, the gears have turned in my mind and, and, and confirmed it. It's definitely three hours for the AQL test and three hours for the MAT test. Um, um, so, over, Monique, over, just to over, cycle over back to your question. Chat. If you apply for a course that does not require an MBT result yet, have written it, is your application possibly stronger? Obviously, as long as your NSC results are as required. Monique, I don't believe they would, would look at the MBT in that case. If, if they don't require it, but you have written it, um, I don't think it would strengthen your application in that regard. They would look at the admission criteria for that course. Any ancillary, um, any um, additional components to the application, um, unless they were, were within the ad admissions framework, they would probably not consider it. Um, you know, some applications look into how involved a learner is outside of just simply their, their results. You know, they, they want to see that this, this learner is engaged in, in, in the community or um, has, 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 has a track record of, of, of being functional in teams or, or, or whatever. Um, and so if that, if that is, if that is in the, if that is in the application requirements, then they'll look at something like that and maybe doing the MBTs as additional studying or something might be helpful. But if it's not required, I don't believe they will consider it an application from a, from a fairness perspective. Okay, Sarah Ann Howard asks, can we re rewrite our MBTs if we aren't happy with our results? Yes, Sarah Ann, you can rewrite the MBTs. Um, however, most universities will only consider your first result, even if you have multiple results on the MBT. So while you can rewrite it and get another result, um, most universities are only interested in that first result that, 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 you, that you achieved. Okay. Good question. All right, to cycle through um, some of the other frequently asked questions here, how much does it cost? How much does the MBT cost? So to write the test, it um, as of, of, I don't know if the, 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 the fees for 2021 have been published, but um, in 2020, the fees were 110 Rand per test, two, so per AQL test, uh, for the AQL test and for the MAT test, and then 220 Rand for both tests, if you were writing both tests. And as mentioned, to book your tests, you do that at NBT, dot ac dot za where can i write the mbt test so this is a this is a this is a really interesting question uh, in previous years it was quite sub, uh, the simple answer was the national benchmark test has test venues all over the country and opportunities to write the test between the months of april to about Octo october so many opportunities at test venues around the country so you go onto their site you find a test venue that's close to you you, you book a test date that is that is um, that is opportune for your context, and then you go and write the test in person. As I've mentioned in 2020, that was not possible due to the lockdown. So um, so the MBT had to adjust and um, develop an online testing um, an online testing competency and deliver the tests online, and they did that successfully. And, and I do believe that they've already published that they will be running um, online tests in May and June this year. So go to mbt.ac.za, check when the test dates are, check around the booking, uh, around the, the booking there. Um, they largely, um, they actually mostly, if they only advertise their test dates, um, they're usually only open for booking on the 1st of April. Um, and they usually only advertise their test dates um, in in February March. Um, so just keep an eye on that on on nbt.ac.za and um, in terms of when you're able to book and when you have visibility into what the test dates are. Obviously, in terms of in-person test venues, um, that remains to be seen for the year um, due to the fact that we are still having to observe um, a degree of lockdown. As we, as we grapple with the, with the pandemic. Who typically needs to sit the MAT test? I believe I did answer that. 
It's your highly competitive degree programs that need an additional layer of differentiation in terms of admitting candidates. And it's especially those degree programs that have a, a large degree of mathematics in them that will need to, that will require the math test. And that addresses the frequently asked questions that we have um, pre-prepped here. So yeah, I'm going to pause there and, and just check that there aren't any other questions. Um, SK, I imagine there's, there's, there haven't been any questions coming through via Facebook. Otherwise, you would have chimed in. No. Okay, yeah, no, no questions for now. So to everyone in attendance this evening, um, if you have any other questions, please raise your hand or, or drop them in the chat or the Q&A as, as you have done, and we can address them. But this does bring us to the end of the presentation. So we're here to answer your questions if you have any more. Um, I'll wait a little longer just to check in that there aren't any because often the questions are helpful to, to the, to the um, to the whole forum here this evening. But it looks like we've answered everything and it looks like there, there aren't any further questions. Thank you, Monique. I'm glad you found it informative. Um, yeah, so with that, um, I'd just like to thank you again for, for your interest and in attending. I hope it was, it was helpful to you in terms of navigating the national benchmark tests it's 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 not a straightforward thing to navigate a lot of 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 a lot to to understand in terms of what are the requirements out there and things continue to be in a degree of flux due to the pandemic so keep your eye on the degree programs that you're going towards at the universities keep your eye on those requirements keep your eye on mbt.ac.za um, and we do encourage you to prepare for that test because it um it it um, can influence admission into the next step you're taking in your journey to, towards your career of choice. And so we really encourage you to, to prepare for it and give yourselves the best shot at, um, at, at, at your next step. And um, thank you to SK for supporting this evening. And um, thank you to all of you uh, for your time and all of the best um, with the national benchmark tests in 2021. If you have any further questions, you can always go on to advantagelearn.com and, and, and engage with our team there who, who will be able to help you. You can call us um, and we'll be happy to, to, to help you with any questions you might have with the national benchmark tests. SK, I think that is a good time to close. Um, thank you for joining us and everything of the best in 2021. <laughs>